Hey there, and welcome to the Pharmacist Academy. In today's video, we will learn about loop diuretics. My job here is to present the information to you in the simplest way for you to understand. So if I'm able to achieve that, then all I ask is for you to hit the like button. Okay, let's begin. The loop diuretics name was derived from the part of the renal tubule that these medications work at, the loop of Henle, specifically at the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle. When we zoom into the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle, we see something like this. We have the inside of the tubule, or the pipe that carries the filtrates, the cells, and then the blood next to it. So normally, the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter reabsorbs sodium, potassium, and two chloride ions from the filtrate into the cells. The sodium that just moved into the cell will move into the blood through the sodium potassium ATPase, which allows three sodiums to move into the blood and two potassiums to move into the cells. A lot of the potassium in the cells now starts to leak out through a potassium channel into the lumen of the tubule. The lumen of the tubule becomes very positively charged. When the calcium and magnesium that's also in the lumen notice that it's too positively charged in that area, they don't like that. So what they do is that they prefer to be with anions, right? So they end up escaping by passing in between the cells into the blood. The chloride that also moved in initially also ends up moving into the blood as well. When a patient takes a loop diuretic, it inhibits the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter, which will lead to less sodium being moved into the cells and increase the sodium concentration in the tubule lumen. Because water loves sodium so much, it also ends up moving into the tubule lumen where the sodium is, and that's how we get the diuresis effect. This diuresis effect is the reason why we use it for the following indications. Hypertension. Diuretics do play an important role in the management of hypertension because of the ability to remove salt and water through the urine. This lowers the amount of fluid flowing through the veins and arteries, and as a result, blood pressure goes down. Thiazides are more common to see in this setting, and we reserve loop diuretics for resistant hypertension, which is defined as an office blood pressure of 130 over 80 or greater, and the patient is taking at least three antihypertensive medications at optimal dosing, and it includes a diuretic. And then, of course, you have to confirm the patient's adherence to those medications. By the way, I have a video on hypertension. I'm going to include the link above. Make sure you check it out easy breakdown. Now, synonymous to other diuretics, we also use loop diuretics to manage conditions associated with fluid overload. This includes heart failure, where the heart is unable to pump blood out effectively, causing the blood to build up in the vessel. This increases the pressure within the vessels, leading to fluid leaking out of the tissues. Although they do not reduce mortality long term, they are able to decrease the daily symptoms and increase exercise tolerance. Loop diuretics are preferred because of their greater diuretic capabilities, and loop diuretics also retain efficacy with decreased renal function. Renal failure, simply because the kidneys are not able to remove excess fluid from the body. So therefore, we could use diuretics. Hepatic failure slows the regular flow of blood through the liver. This increases the pressure in the vein that brings the blood to the liver. The increase in the pressure will cause the fluid to leak outside of the tissues. Now, here are some examples of the drugs in the class. Furosemide, bumetanide, torsemide, and ethacranic acid. Out of all of these, torsemide has the longest half-life, but they all have the same onset of action and come in IV and oral formulations. Okay, so before we move on, let's test your understanding. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like these. Thank you. So based on the mechanism of action of loop diuretics, which of the following is a possible side effect? Hypomagnesemia, hypercalcemia, or hypochloremia. I'll give you a few seconds, but pause the video if needed and put your answers in the comments. We will discuss the answer next when we review the adverse effects of these agents. Let's start with the electrolyte imbalances. So we have hypo, hyponatremia or low sodium, hypokalemia or low potassium, 
hypochloremia or low chloride, hypomagnesemia or low magnesium, and lastly, hypocalcemia or low calcium. These side effects are all due to the mechanism of action of these agents. So the decrease in sodium, potassium, and chloride should be easy because we know loop diuretics inhibit the sodium, potassium, chloride co-transporter. This causes sodium, potassium, and chloride to stay in the tubule lumen and not enter the cells and then the blood. So that is why we execrete most of it. For the low magnesium and low calcium is because less potassium is entering the cell through the co-transporter. So less potassium will also come into the cells through the sodium potassium ATPase. This will lead to less potassium leaking out through the potassium channels into the lumen. This prevents the excess positive charge in the tubule lumen, which will allow calcium and magnesium to stay in the lumen and end up getting excreted. A good way to remember that loop diuretics reduces the blood levels of all these electrolytes is simply based off the O's in the name loop. Those O's means hypo, and in this case, hypoelectrolytes. Loop diuretics conversely also increase the blood levels of other things. But these are not really electrolytes. These include uric acid, so hyperuricemia, cholesterol, triglycerides, and hyperglycemia. The hyperuricemia is due to loop diuretics inhibiting the secretion from the blood into the filtrates. This can lead to an acute gout attack or flare, so it's best to avoid it in patients with gout. Loop diuretics have also been found to cause a small acute increase in cholesterol and triglycerides. This effect may be due to the increased concentration of blood products due to the free water loss. Now, the effect of loop diuretics on blood sugar levels and diabetes risk is not well defined. Studies evaluating an effect have been mixed and inconsistent. In long-term therapy, the effect does not appear to be significant, but I included it here just for your information. Some other notable adverse effects include photosensitivity. So lube diuretics may cause the skin to become more sensitive to the sun and lead to skin reactions. It's recommended for patients to limit sun exposure and also use sunscreen. Autotoxicity will manifest as tinnitus and possible hearing loss. This can occur with any of the lube diuretics, but ethocrinic acid has been known to have the highest potential. The risk also increases when the lube diuretics are used together with aminoglycosides or in patients with renal impairments. Patients who receive higher doses and also IV formulations have some increased risk. Here are some other side effects. All of these are due to the fluid loss. In terms of contraindications, you want to avoid these agents in patients with anuria. By definition, these are patients who have a daily urine output of less than 100 ml. The risk of ototoxicity increases when you use it in the aneuric patients. Because loop diuretics have a sulfonamide backbone chemical structure, it is not recommended in patients with a history of hypersensitivity to sulfur or sulfonamide drugs. Loops are not recommended in patients with hepatic encephalopathy since they could further increase the production of ammonia and precipitate the hypokalemia also seen in these patients. And lastly, electrolyte imbalances, of course, always want to correct any hypos in patients before starting the loop diuretic. And that will be the end of this video. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you did, then like the video, subscribe for more, and leave your feedback down below. Also, follow me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video, and take care.